Good morning for everyone, and thank you, Rosie, for um, this kind introduction. I am Esther Arias. Um, if you have already uh, looked to the program today, I am a kind of outsider because I am not an artist at all. But I am really enjoy this platform to share with you some ideas and concrete initiatives that are taking place worldwide to show how uh, art can contribute to solve different problematics, including problematics in my country of origin, Colombia. The title of my presentation today is uh, Traditional Music as an Alternative Way for Young People in Post-Conflict Scenarios, a look at the Colombian Llanos. Llanos is the Spanish word to name the Eastern Plains in the Colombian territory. The objective of my presentation is to highlight the music of Colombian Llanos within the framework of the cultural diplomacy strategy, which has been implemented by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The idea is to expose how the music of Los Llanos is a tool through which young people can be agents of peace in territories previously exposed to the conflict. To do that, uh, I structure my presentation in three parts plus a conclusion. In my introduction, I will begin with a brief but general panorama about culture and arts. Then I will announce some experience highlighting the use of arts, and not limited to music, as a tool of peace worldwide. This experience will help me to address uh, my personal viewpoint about cultural diplomacy later. Then I will cover the sports and cultural diplomacy initiative in Colombia. And this session is the longest part of my presentation with four subcategories. The background of the initiative, the case of the Guaviare and Vichada departments, uh, the importance of Llanera music as a tool of peace, and a review of the intercultural exchanges with young people from the region. Finally, I will provide a general conclusion. So let's begin with, with culture and art. Culture and art are two significant branches in human development and in the development of a country. Culture is an expression of the human being with a broad list of positive elements. It can help societies to understand their uh, history, but it also can help them to redefine their future and position in the world. The term culture comes from the Latin cultus and colori, and it refers to the cultivation of the human spirit and the intellectual faculties of humankind. In this regard, we can associate uh, culture with the idea of progress. And culture encompasses the different forms and expression of a given society, including the arts. What is art? I say I am not an artist at all, but we can all agree that art is a component of culture. Art is a vehicle to transmit ideas and values inherent to any human society throughout space and time. Art or the arts have different phases such as music, cinema, dance, painting, and so on. Art uh, can also convene and find point of coincidence between actors who not necessarily share the same background. Most importantly, Artistical practices, as the one I have already mentioned, can also be vehicles to unite populations divided by conflict or war. With all these elements and summarizing, culture as a general framework can be considered as an antithesis of war, if we use it for positive, of course. In this regard, the UNESCO perspective of culture is that. Culture with its different artistic expression at the service of peace is an integral approach to prevent violence and conflict. It is an alternative uh, to war. That is why it is not strange that uh, the UNESCO associates culture and arts to promote programs based on education for peace, sustainable economic and social development, and respect for human rights. This approach is not new at different moments uh, in history, cultural expression have been deployed to remedy the aftermath of conflicts or to prevent the resurgence of new ones caused by open wounds. In other cases, cultural expression have also been deployed to denounce abuses of different nature or in the absence of violence, they have promoted intercultural dialogue. Examples are to be uh, found in each of the five continents, and I will quickly mention some positive experience in the last year. 
let's uh, begin with Africa. When we talk about Africa in his music, we find many artists who have lived an unfavorable situation very close. And many African artists have served as speakers to expose to the world what's happened in the continent. When I seen an African music, the name of Emmanuel Jal come to my mind. I don't know if there is anyone from uh, Sudan here. Uh, Jal is a Sudanese artist who has made of his childhood a true struggle in the world. Nowadays, he's 40 years old, and during his childhood, he was a child of war. And he was it for five years. A hard experience he has told on different stations around the world, in a book and in a song entitled War Shy. Maybe the name is familiar for you, maybe not. And maybe you are wondering right now if a song can effectively solve a problem such as the child soldier issue. I believe a song itself does not stop the problem, of course but it contributes to making the situation visible and step by step, it can help to promote change in different countries. I do believe a song can inspire. Let's see now an example in Asia, the second picture on this slide. And it is in Philippines. Certainly you remember uh, the Marawi conflict in 2017. I'm not going uh, to give uh, the detail of this uh, conflict because there are different elements to consider. My interest is instead to focus on what happened after it, mainly to attempt the displaced people calculated around 4,100 in a completely devastated city. Among the main initiatives that have been taking place, there has always been a uh, place for arts. Thus, in 2018, there was an initiative called Paying for Peace to Reveal Marawi. It was an art exhibition launched by the Mindanao Peace Building Institute. They did something simple. They organized a community-based uh, art workshop in Marawi City itself with volunteers uh, from Manila, Davo, Digos, and other cities of the country. 50 young people participated and I know it's a minimal amount if we compare it with the number of displaced people. But please, seeing these young people, some of them in the picture, acting as multiplier of knowledge, skills, and values of peaceful coexistence. Focusing on young people is essential because there was and there is still evidence that the attackers recruited a large number of child soldiers, many from local school uh, from local schools in Marawi. I will come back later uh, with the definition of child soldier. The point is that uh, with such sample initiative, young people show how resilient they are. Through art, in this case painting, young people are able to express uh, their hopes and aspiration for peace and rehabilitation. Let's see now an uh, example in Europe. At this moment, everyone talks about the Berlinale, which is a significant event uh, but there is another cinema event as, as important as this one, in my opinion. And I refer to the Cinema for Peace initiative carried out by the Cinema for Peace Foundation. This foundation is an international nonprofit organization whose objective is to foster change through film. They are based in Berlin, and since the beginning of the century, the Cinema for Peace initiative has been aiming to influence through films the perception and resolution of social, political, and humanitarian challenges. The foundation considered that film play a significant role in highlighting inequality, injustice, and inhumanity, as well it can offer hope and vision for a better future. And the last example before I cover the Americas is in Oceania. There, different workshops are continually taking place to connect the small insular state with the giants of the continent to preserve their tradition. Illustrative are the workshops connecting Papua New Guinea with Australia through the arts. Since to this workshop, the agencies involved support artists with administration and management to make a career in the arts as a viable economic choice. Moreover, the participants of these workshops discuss how to maintain indigenous cultural practices in both countries. Maybe you know Papua New Guinea is the poorest of the 14 states in the Pacific. It has circa uh, 7 million in inhabitants. And however, there are over 7 
a thousand different cultural groups. Each of these has his own language, as well as distinct forms of cultural expression, including dance, music, body paint, costume, weapons, and so on. And I want to end highlighting uh, the initiative in the Americas, specifically in Colombia, the core theme of my presentation today. There, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs launched in 2011 the Sports and Cultural Diplomacy Initiative. In my opinion, this initiative regroups all that cultural expressions can do, that is, denunciation, awareness, reconciliation, and intercultural dialogue. The initiative managed two aspects, one related to sports and one related uh, to the arts. I will focus on the one related to the arts. In general, the initiative was born as a contribution to minimize some of the collateral damage of the armed conflict affecting sensitive groups of the population in Colombia, such as minors. Unfortunately, in some areas, minors were target victims of recruitment by illegal armed groups and other non-state actors. When the initiative was uh, presented to the public opinion in 2011, the then uh, Colombian foreign minister said, the project pretends to support all young people to escape from violence, to show them the abilities and skills they have and the possibilities they can find in sports and in the arts. In other words, remind them that it is possible to get away from negative influences. Since then, many initiatives or many programs have been carried out. As a case study, I want to hype on those developed in Guaviare and Bichada, two departments in Los Llanos, the eastern side of the country. Los Llanos is a region with a long exposition to violence. However, thanks to his great musical tradition, joy generation foresee peace rather than war as their final destination. And I want to focus on this experience because for me personally, one can try to make an approach to the definition of culture and art, but it's really difficult. And uh, Jara, when she opened uh, the conference on Wayden, remind how difficult it is. For me, cultural diplomacy is even more difficult. Uh, that is why uh, with these different examples, I try uh, to approach the concept. But when it comes to define cultural diplomacy, the definitions are so broad that only through concrete initiative we can better understand and recognize his value. Uh, there is no agreed definition on cultural diplomacy. Different terms such as public diplomacy, international cultural, cultural relations, international cultural policy, and state foreign cultural mission are used as synonyms for cultural diplomacy. There is not general agreement among scholars. Nonetheless, there is a British author, John Matthew Mitchell, and he says that the practitioner is the key. Independent agencies undertake international cultural relations. Uh, governments undertake cultural diplomacy. I insist there is not a unique perspective. Indeed, the one uh, proposed by Mitchell opposes the perspective of ICD in the sense that cultural diplomacy can be practiced by either the public sector, private sector, or uh, civil society. To present the Colombian initiative, I adhere to the viewpoint of Mitchell. The practitioner is key. Traditional diplomacy is still held by governments, but they cannot do it alone. They need partners at home and abroad. It is why cultural diplomacy is a joint work. Cultural diplomacy, like other new uh, dimension of diplomacy, is not of the exclusive domain of nation states, since they are not currently the only actors on the international stage. Thus, the private sector and civil society play a fundamental role in promoting dialogue between cultures and nations. That is why it is necessary to recognize the actions carried out by some individuals or non-profit organizations, like the ones I highlighted in Africa, Europe, and Oceania. That being said, um, taking the approach of Michel, uh, I will present concretely the Sports and Cultural Diplomacy Initiative, and I will begin with his background. The initiative emerged as a proposal to strengthen the international relation of Colombia while promoting the commitment of the Colombian state to favor social inclusion, peaceful coexistence, and intercultural dialogue, 
to sport and culture, with the conviction that both are essential factors of social transformation. Following UNESCO viewpoint, culture is inherent to all populations and societies of the world. Therefore, cultural projects can be a tool of foreign policy and are to be seen as a part of government agendas. Now, tracing in more detail the context of the initiative, one should also mention that in 2011, the cultural directorate of the ministry began to design a strategy regarding the commitments that Colombia had assumed with accepting, when accepting resolution 1612 of 2005. Uh, this resolution was adopted by the United, United Nations Security Council and it implements a monitoring and reporting mechanism regarding the use of child soldier. As you can imagine, a stock with child recruitment is a challenge linked to the peace and security agenda. Um, by child soldiers, you have to be careful because it is not just a boy or a girl with a weapon. In the slide, you can see uh, the definition proposing, uh, proposed by the Paris um, Conference in 2007, and it is any person below 18 years uh, who is used by armed force or armed groups in any capacity. Uh, as I say, not only with a, with a weapon, but uh, they can be used as good porters, spies, or for sex, sexual purposes. Now coming back to the resolution, a lease or a monitoring mechanism can be useful. Still without doubt, the adoption of preventing measures, preventing programs could be more successful. That would say the cultural directorate of the ministry took into consideration this preventive element to design the initiative. The ministry recognized, as I already mentioned, the enormous potential of sport and culture as useful tools that favor personal and collective transformation. The initiative follows other goals that complement the sense of the program, and you can read them on the slide. For instance, to promote the integral development of children, uh, to promote local protective em environments, to diffuse inner values to sport and um, uh, to arts like discipline and perseverance, to contribute to the formation of positive, positive leaders in communities. And additionally, the initiative was conceived as a remarkable soft power strategy to position a positive image of Colombia in the international community, demonstrating concrete actions to counteract the adverse effect of the, of the armed conflict. Since uh, 2011, when the initiative was presented, many changes at different levels have been taking place to favor not only children, but their institutions and regions of origin. I want uh, to highlight uh, the work in the departments of Guaviare and Bichada. I will begin with a general description of Guaviare. Guaviare is the department in red. Um, it is a, a department that for decades have filled with great intensity the conflict. It was due to his isolation from the center of the country and because the infrastructure, infrastructure was minimal. Today, after more uh, than three years of the signature of the peace agreement with the FARC, reaching his capital city, San Jose del Guaviare, is more simple. But the problem of isolation is still latent in some areas making them vulnerable to the action of remaining illegal groups. The reality of Vichada is similar. This department uh, has five times the surface of a country like El Salvador. This vast territory, which shares a border with Venezuela, has approximately 7,000 inhabitants. Both departments are rich in renewable and not renewable natural resources such as oil. This situation explains in part why this area was so affected uh, by the action of different illegal groups. Many of them wanted to illegally control the resources or store the ones who legally were with them. Moreover, in the eastern plains, the former FARC secretariat was concentrated, drawing the attention of the paramilitaries who illegally uh, fought them. The presence of different groups lets many victims, and in order you have an idea, and according to the statistic of uh, the Colombian National Victim Unit, the conflict left 93,146 victims in Guaviare, 
and 26,439 in Bichada. By other, uh, but other than statistics, there are also significant testimonies about the situation. In the slide, you can follow how an habitant of the region recalled his childhood. He provided this testimony to the members of the current three commission in Colombia. And you can read, he recalls how the presence of different groups, legal and illegal, and the conflict itself became something normal in his earlier years. So it is a fact, the, the violence to these territories, it happened and it cannot be changed. And still, his inhabitants, the authorities, and the society in general can contribute to improving their present and future. The ministry and the local authorities recognize that this region is not only rich in natural resources, but also is rich in musical tradition. They identify this artistic heritage to show young people that despite the Latin threats, another reality is possible. Indeed, since 2011, uh, the young population of this department has been beneficiary of the cultural diplomacy programs of the ministry. When I talk about his musical tradition, I refer mainly to his dance, Joropo, and it sounds at the rhythm of maracas, cuatro is a kind of uh, small guitar, and harp. The initiative have allowed young people from this region to leave Colombia for the first time to support their talent and to learn about other realities. Now, can the music of the Colombian plains really play a role in a post-conflict scenario? The answer is affirmative. If it play an important role uh, during the conflict, then why not in peacetime? Uh, during the conflict, Janera Music told, among many, many other stories, the story of war, the relationship of the armed conflict with the peasants, uh, with nature, with the plains. Janero singers composed verses about war victims, victimizers that are still in the life memory of the community. A famous singer say, in the most difficult years of the armed conflict in the Eastern Plains, one could not speak of what was happening but people could sing. People composed songs to their land and the abandonment of their property, properties, to his family and his death, to his people, and to the faithful news about what happened there. In other words, the story of Los Llanos was not written, but soon. Music from Los Llanos has been proposed even as a testimonial element that can contribute to the work of the current true commission. This is Janera Music, as a historical document, as a mnemotechnic resource that contains part of the truth of the region. Beyond that, uh, the music of Los Llanos can also be an instrument of healing to transform the spaces and the bodies of his inhabitants physically and emotionally. Curiously, uh, Janera music have never stopped telling the story of people who dream of being better every day, despite the recent violent uh, reality. Joropo is part of the valuable heritage and cultural identity of Janeiro people, to the point that some people say that Janeiro learned to dance and sing Joropo before walking. In this sense, Joropo lyrics, lyrics can combine sadness of the past with feelings of joy and daily battles to conquer life and love. That bit said, I want to review the Cultural Diplomacy Initiative in action as in some intercultural exchanges with show people from this Colombian geographical area. The initiative is developed, as the name implies, through artistic exchanges abroad. Each exchange has a specific characteristic that make it unique. Also, all share a common objective, that is to provide participants with an experience they can treasure throughout their life. The following is a kind of brief step-by-step -step to organize this change. First, there is the selection of a country with an event or a discipline with similar characteristics or a common roots with those practiced by Colombian young people in Los Llanos. Second, the geographical selection uh, is in accordance with the spirit of the initiative. I mean, many territories could be beneficiaries of the project. But uh, to make the selection objective, the ministry takes as a basis the list of prioritized municipalities according to the level of recruitment established by 
the Intersectoral Commission for Prevention of Illegal Recruitment. Once the geographical prioritization is established, there is the selection of the participants. They must be between uh, the ages of 13 and 17, be recognized with their communities for their commitment, leadership, and discipline in the practice of a musical air of the region, I mean singing, dancing, or performing a traditional instrument. And they must be enrolled in a formal education institution and demonstrate good academic performance. The last step is setting up the agenda. Uh, um, there are in situ meetings where officers of the ministry meet with instructor of music, the parents, and uh, the children selected. The idea is that the agenda has a cultural and educational formative dimension. And to follow success in this ambition, there is also contact with the authorities in the country of destination or with private organizations, all that through the Colombian diplomatic missions abroad. In this context, the itinerary is designed incorporating cultural activities such as visits to museums or tours in different cities, attendance at important events in the country of destination, the duration of the exchange varies uh, between 10 and 15 days, during which time the beneficiaries also meet with celebrities, mainly in their musical air, or with governmental leaders. I know all that could be taken for granted, but for these uh, young people coming from areas with a strong past of violence like Guaviare and Bichada, such experiences make a difference and they can add as multipliers in their territories. Now I invite you um, to have a look at the exchanges for, the, for this job population of these two departments the last years. Already in the memories to the Congress in, in 2014, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs reported the experience of the group Herederos del Joropo, meaning Herds of Joropo, a group from Guaviare. The group was composed of five girls and five boys who participated in the, in the international children's festivals in Turkey. All they were ambassadors of Colombian culture. They had the opportunity to visit museums, libraries, taste completely new flavors, and of course, they held to position Colombia as a country rich in cultural di diversity while promoting intercultural dialogue, mutual understanding, and peaceful coexistence. It is noteworthy that in this event, among 45 delegations, Colombia was the only Spanish-speaking country invited to the festival. In 2015, uh, the opportunity was for minors belonging to the group Renacer Bichadense, meaning Revival of Bichada, which is a Colombian folk music group. The group brought uh, the Janera culture to the A edition of the World Festival of Harp developed in Asuncion, the capital city of Paraguay. There, they made exchanges with musicians from France, Mexico, Scotland, Sweden, Paraguay, among others. And the talent of the children uh, led the Asuncion municipality to declare them as illustrious citizens in recognition of their contribution to the preservation and promotion of the culture of the harp in the world. In 2016, uh, the term was for 13 young performance of Bandola Janera. Bandola is also like a, a small guitar. Member of the Quita Pesares Ensemble. Uh, the group is from Puerto Carreño, the capital city of Bichada. And they made a cultural exchange in the cities of Lisbon, Porto, and Braga in Portugal. In this cultural exchange, uh, the young artists carry out activities such as concerts and they took uh, master classes of Portuguese guitar at the Museum of Music, La Casa de la Musica in Porto. And uh, they also had direct contact with Fado, uh, the representative musical heir of Portugal. One year later, in 2017, 12 harpies girls from Bichada and Guaviare traveled to Ireland for cultural exchange. The young women combined the chords of the flat hearts with the sounds of the Celtic harp. In addition, they engaged in a musical residence with young musicians from the Cork College, an educational institution recognized as cultural epicenter in Ireland. 
The young women also represented Colombia at the CAR Festival, which brings together artists from different parts of the world around fall music. When I was uh, talking about the steps to organize and exchange, I mentioned uh, the importance of selecting a country with a similar music tradition. And you should point out that in the development of Irish music as in the genera, the heart has the central role. Another key company, uh, component of this exchange was that girls were able to realize how Ireland works for gender equality. In fact, gender equality is a priority area of Ireland foreign policy. Ireland takes every possible opportunity to highlight the right of all girls in the world to have access to quality education. Moreover, this country high points the importance of women participation in decision making process at all levels. Um, the last two uh, exchanges, in 2018, um, the musical group Son Joropo from Puerto Carreño participate in the celebration of the Cultural Diversity Day for Dialogue and Development. This celebration was organized by UNESCO in Paris, and they opened the panel toward access to culture for all. The UNESCO wanted a panel to answer the question, how it is possible to guarantee the right of all people to have access uh, to cultural manifestations. In November last year, uh, a group of six young artists from San Jose del Guaviare uh, visit Ireland. They share their knowledge with young people from Music Generation, a foundation dedicated to the democratization of music. During their visit, uh, the young people participated in the International Heart Festival of Aquil Island. They performed in front of more than 600 people. They also performed a concert at the headquarters of the major office in Dublin. Additionally, they were part of the colloquium of heart and feuds of the city of Laos. And well, we are at the beginning of uh, this year. There is not exchange by, by the moment. Uh, but I want to add that under the perspective of orange economy that the current Colombian government promotes, the departments of Guaviare and Bichada continue to be prioritized. The orange economy, you know, is a concept linked with the power of culture and the construction of peace based on legality and the promotion of div diversity and talent. Indeed, in the different conversations that are taking place in uh, Los Llanos, to bring the community close to the concert, it is clear that Janera music has a significant value in this domain. It is reflected by the exchanges I have uh, already mentioned and shared with you, but there are other signs or previous episodes uh, that confirm that. Number one, the war song of Los Llanos were declared in 2017 by UNESCO as an intangible heritage of humanity. And number two, Janeiro Music has been nominated to different Latin Grammy Awards. So it's time uh, to close my presentation, and I want to insist in the universe of cultures and the arts, traditional music is an excellent tool to seduce and keep apart huge generation from violent actors. It is not rhetorical. Traditional music, as in the case of Los Llanos, can be a key factor uh, in social transformation, which help instill discipline and perseverance, all that elements that contribute to building a more inclusive society with more opportunities for all. I don't want to skip uh, the fact that the Sport and Cultural Diplomacy Initiative of uh, the Ministry received in Monaco the Sport and Peace Award as the Diplomatic Action of the Year in 2017. It was a good indicator for Colombia. Now I know for policymakers and for the academic world, sometimes it is complicated to measure the impacts of cultural diplomacy actions. But I consider that follow out this kind of initiative and following up the life story of children, boys and girls who have participated in these programs could provide more understanding about how cultural diplomacy really operates for good. Thank you for uh, your attention. And now I want you to be more familiar with Joropo. That is why I kindly ask uh, Mr. Annette uh, Witsila, an artist and music professor, 
uh, to perform in this morning some Horeopa composition that she have adapted for piano. You should know that the word Horeopo comes from the Arabic word sarap, which means sirup. And you know, sirup is something sweet and sticky. And that is why Annette, who has lived and worked uh, as university music professor in Colombia, was seduced uh, by this musical air. I hope you enjoyed the performance, and thank you, Annette. The stage is yours. Yeah. <laughs> 